This is a Redivus RA25 GMRS mobile radio. It's in a small package here, so it's probably going to be a small radio. This might be great for overlanders, off-roaders, jeepers, campers, jeepers, jeepers, jeep people. You Jeep guys. I'd like to have a Jeep one day. This might be great, a great option for those of you with a little bit limited space for GMRS communications. And uh, we're going to take a look at it today. TQ Photo, TQ Photo, TQ Park on the air. You go Charlie 5, Hotel with Bravo. Ham Radio 2.0 reviews, news, and how-tos of things that are new in ham radio, but also GMRS radio. My name's Jason. I'm KC5HWB. In the GMRS world, I'm WRFK311. Welcome to all the new licen newly licensed GMRS operators who got your call sign or tried to get your call sign after April 19th when the fee dropped from $70 to $35. You guys watch till the end for a special code that I'm going to put in the end of this video just to see if you watch to the end and uh, put in the comments below. So thank you for joining today. We're going to take a look at this newish. Th it's not a new radio. It's been out for a little while. It's not too long. But this is a mobile GMRS radio called an RA25 from Redivus. Redivus is a Chinese company, but this does have, according to what I'm reading here, the FCC certification. So it is part 95 Echo certified and legal to use on GMRS frequencies in the United States. GMRS doesn't really exist outside of the United States. The frequencies exist. They, they're usually called something else, but general mobile radio service is a service inside of the United States that you can now get a 10-year license for only $35. All you got to do is sign up, pay $35. They issue you a call sign, and you're done. That's it. There's no test. So let's take a look at this radio real quick. Do a quick unboxing, which I'm not... Some people don't like unboxings, and that's okay. That's okay. Got this manual here, instructional manual. This is instructional manual in other languages, I guess. Yeah. Yep, that right there. This is how big the radio is right here. That's how big the radio is. Right there. And for those of you who watch my channel, it is about one Baofeng in length. <laughs> so, without the antenna, of course. Okay. And then it's less than a Baofeng in depth. So you'd mount it like this with the screen facing forward like that. So that's about how big that is right there as compa care compared to a bow thing. Microphone, some mounting hardware for the radio and the microphone clip, and then a mounting bracket that you can mount somewhere in your vehicle. So what I want to do is take this and put it on the power meter and see what we see. Should also mention that this comes with a power cable for a cigarette lighter style adapter in your vehicle. That means it doesn't draw much power because most of those are uh, most of those power adapters in your vehicle are rated for about 10 amps. So it should pull less than 10 amps when you're keyed up. Otherwise, they wouldn't wire it like this, I hope. I'm going to put it on the power meter. We're going to see what it does. It's advertised. The reason it's called RA25 is it's advertised at 25 watts. Now, legally, you can do up to 50 watts with GMRS. Uh, and with an external antenna, that's a lot of power. But 25 watts is five times as much power as most of your handheld radios. So in a group, if you're caravanning in a group to a certain place, or if you're camping with a group in a certain place, 25 watts is going to be plenty of power, especially with a properly mounted antenna on top of your vehicle. So let's put this on the power meter and see what happens. All right, this is what the radio looks like when it's powered up. Obviously, we've got the microphone connection here on the left side. VM is for... VFO and memory mode. Main switches between the top and bottom band and monitor opens up your squelch. Hold down the monitor in case you're in case there's someone out there in the distance you can't hear him very well, you can hold down the monitor. The up down arrows scroll through the menus and the fun button. You always need a fun button. Fun button is function. They should put that as F U N C instead of F U N, but that's okay. So we can go into the fun button here and we can scroll down through the menus that is available on each channel. So we are on 462.625 megahertz right now, which is, you can see at the top left, it's probably kind of hard to see in the camera, I apologize for that. 016 is the channel number, 462.575. 462.625 is 018. Go all the way up here to 22. And there's an S after them. 
which I th assume means simplex, but... Uh, so you can see the channel number up at the top. Some of them are, are programmed for offset for repeater channels. Some of them are not. There's an S after the channel number that you might or may not be able to see in the camera right now. That's 022S. S, I would think, means simplex, but all 30 of the channels have an S after it. So it seems like it's not simplex because there's some offset repeater channels in there, with, which I would think the repeater channels would have an R instead of an S. Also, if I go here... If you long press the fun button, it locks the screen. Now it can't change the channel. Long press the fun button again, it unlocks it. Now I can change the channel. You can also see this says DT, narrow, and H right above to the top right here. The very top right is the is the power, 14.0 volts is what I'm at running at right now on the Astron power supply at the bottom of the screen. This is a 50 amp power supply. It'd power like five radios at the same time. DT, N, and H. DT is for DTS tone, for digital uh, tone, di digital sub-audible tone. N is for narrow, and H is for high power. And when you change channels, some of those change. CT is for a CTCSS analog tone, still narrow, still high power. And then we go to low power. Some of these shared FRS channels are low power. The channels don't really seem to be in any type of order. See, this one right here has a plus next to the CT, which tells me it's a positive offset. And if I key up, it goes to 467.575. But the channel number is still 024S. So I don't know why it's an S instead of an R, but I don't know. It's just not a big deal, just something I noticed. If we go to here at VFO, 145.0 is a ham radio frequency. And if I key up the microphone, I get a tone. I don't know if you can hear that in the camera or not. But it will not key up on that frequency. So... That's where we are with that. So let's go back down here to one of the non-repeater channels. And if I key up, it is on high power. You can see the H at the top right of the screen, and it's doing about 21 and a half watts. Now, I'm probably losing a little bit of power on this connection in the back, going to this, this type of coax in the back, going to my MFJ9849 meter right here. I am looking at maybe changing a couple things up to get a little bit more accurate. But the last time I calibrated this meter, it was within a half a watt. So I'm pretty confident that it's it's doing what it's supposed to do right now. So we're getting about 21 and a half watts out of this radio on high power. Go down here to one of the low power channels right there. There's a low power channel. And we're going to get about six and a quarter watts out of that uh, channel right there. WRFK 311 testing. I'm going into what's called a dummy load which means it's no, there's no antenna on the back, so I'm transmitting maybe two or three feet outside of my location right now, but the dummy load keeps the radio from burning up itself if the SWR is too high. In fact, you can see the SWR in this meter when I key up. I key up right there. SWR is 1.2. Reflective power is 0 0.2. These are, numbers are both really low. Anything under 1.5 is considered good. Closer to 1.0 is best. So that right there, that number right there for SWR into the dummy load is pretty good. There we go. So a little subcompact 25-watt rated, 20, 21, 22-watt real power radio for GMRS users. And the word of the day to put in your comment below is fun. Fun, as in the fun button. I don't know why they can't put a C behind the fun button to make it funk as in function. Put fun in the comment below, that way I know you watched at the end of the video. What type of application do you think this would be good for? Is this, is this a type of radio that would be good for you? Small compact uh, carrying case, something to put in your backpack with an external battery, or a small car, somewhere you wanna hide the radio out of the way, mount it up top above you where it's not too obtrusive. Is this something for you that you think you could use? Put a comment below, start it with the word fun, and thanks for watching today. Welcome to all the new GMRS ham radio operators. <clears throat>